Greetings from the basement studio here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. My name is Jake, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Lisa, who already hit her mic. Oh, no. And we literally organized this place so you didn't do that. I chose to sit over here so I didn't hit the mic. But then you also chose to fling your arms around like an insane person. Hey, and also here is my producer extraordinaire, Davis. Shoulders of justice. (laughs) Together. You got to watch the show if you want to see what that meant. Uh, Or not. It doesn't mean anything. Just shoulder to shoulder. What show? Together we look at paranormal locations from the spooky side. Two historical titty bits. So join us tonight as we make fun of each other, get creeped out, and maybe learn a thing or two. Ooh. In this week's edition of the possibly paranormal podcast, that was that was. We are I can't all over the place. I, t- I, I hit the it. mic. I purposely sat here so I didn't hit the mic. For those of you wondering, we set up a new studio. I like. I got it set up so they have more space, so they've got more room to do their thing. You know, thing. like so Lisa decided flailing arms. She decided yep. to do jumping jacks for some reason and hit the mic. In her defense, she was kind of like mimicking me, but I'm over here not hitting my mic on a weekly basis, <sighs> so I can do that. But I'm not sure. Lisa, if you can do Why that. Why am I so bad at this? Because you, you want to let's can't hear stop it. Lisa, actually, this is Jake. Hold my hand. Uh, this is an intervention. This episode. Are you going to read me a letter? Um. Yes, I, I wrote a letter. Yeah, I wrote here. a letter right hold here. Hold on, Lisa. When you hit your microphone, it reminds me of when people get hit in movies, and it scares me. I watched Fight Club once, and I peed my pants the whole time, except for when they were talking about soap. Um, Lisa, I wish you wouldn't hit the microphone like Tyler Durden hits himself in the movie Fight Club because we we love you and we want you to just be the best you that you can be. Lisa, thank you. Come on, it's not that bad. Okay, uh, Jake's I, turn, Jake's I turn. I feel gained <laughs> up um, on. This is what an intervention is. Um, things to pick up at the grocery store. Milk? <laughs> Jake, Jake, no, flip it, flip it. Shit, run, God Okay, next time. He forgot his real one. I'll read Jake. He sent it to me ahead of time. Lisa. Oh, God. I am a little Dutch boy. (laughs) God damn it. I put my finger in the dam to stop the water from flowing out. (laughs) Okay, I'm going to leave that one. I'm going to leave that alone. (laughs) Because I'm a child, and that's an easy, (laughs) low-hanging fruit. The intervention of Lisa. Lisa, do you feel intervened? (laughs) Guys, she's I, gonna hit it later. So. <sighs> I will. I, I can. I, I. I will try to change my ways. Uh, but I don't no, need you help. Won't. No, you won't. I can do it. No, you won't. All right. And now it's time for the handing out of the rose. I only have one rose this week, and I need to hand it out to one of you too. I think this is how interventions work. I've only seen the <laughs> month TV shows. Wait. Is this, where, is this where I get a coin? <laughs> the yes. Only, the only ones that I really ever saw, I think, were from <laughs> How I Met Your Mother. Interventions? Oh, yeah, they yeah had, but they'd have too many of them. Because they, they had too many interventions, interventions for the intervention. <laughs> That's the only thing I can think of. Well, and we, at one point, it was about red boots, I think. I want to say we successfully did it. I want to say that we we probably cured you. So It's true. I haven't hit my mic out, now in 30 I, seconds. That's a record. Do you want to bet? No. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> not. Why not? You Maybe have, you're you on the so, right side of the bed. You have should so I put should I put the over under in? Lisa, we've been doing this. This is the 44th episode. The over under is not. her hitting it again within the next five, five minutes. Five minutes, really. <laughs> oh, we should do man. that at some point. We should ask Hannah, hey, give us an over under. Not tell her what it's for. And then you guys are going to have to of bet on. a time on. limit? Yes, okay. of a time limit of me hitting. Because she has like hit that. it in the last Fucking second before. She's hit last second and first second. I've done I've done both. That's why. So I think that it would be pretty even. You've got the whole thing covered here. <laughs> I really I will say, do. You don't hit it as often during your segment as much as you do during Jake's segment. That's because I'm holding stuff I in know, my hand. Do you, do you remember so, when we didn't have anything to talk about right away in the show? We do now. We yeah, do now. Lisa just kind of started us off. You know what else <laughs> on we fire. have to talk about, Jake? We have to talk about. A ghost ship. <gasps> Segway. Oh, and no, today's ship. ghost ship is, I get it, Lisa, don't try it. Um, <gasps> <gasps> First you're getting up on me right. with an intervention. This is an intervention. <laughs> Lisa, <laughs> I like my Segway jokes, okay? Stop it. <laughs> but we are talking today about probably the most famous ghost ship in the world. Easily. Even covered on SpongeBob in one of my favorite episodes. That's right. We're talking about the Flying Dutchman. Yes. yes. And for those of you wondering, Dutchman, that's a man from Dutch. And flying is when they are not on the ground. 
So <laughs> and it's good not, job. And it's not my ship. And it's not mine. Why? Because I'm a little Dutch boy. Oh, yeah. No, that'd be the Dutch boyman ship. <laughs> the fun <laughs> Dutch boyman. <laughs> And... That's a horrible joke, but it <laughs> yeah, it the flying Dutch boy. Very well, flying Dutch boyman. Boyman. Um, <laughs> anyway, Lisa, if you can uh, get over the intervening that we just did for you, and instead hit us up with some history, please. That would be fantastic. Please. My God. Okay. So, flying Dutchman. It's a legendary ghost ship. <laughs> There's your history. No. Um, <laughs> Done. Easy. All right. And you guys. mic drop. This is okay. a five minute episode today. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who knew? Um, so. Most of it was about her hitting her mic. Shut up. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Wow. <laughs> I didn't I hit think... the mic when I said it. No, you did not. I think we just broke her. I think we did too. So, anyway, history. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You suck. Oh, um, man. So, basically, this ship, it's never able to make port. That's really what the legend of the Flying Dutchman is. Can it make Merlot? Stop. Stop. The worst joke of the day by far. And we made some horrible ones right there. How did you make a wine joke? uh, It was wine and it was bad. Oh, boy. Oh boy, I we just I know we I try to tell us in our producer notes that we're supposed to not stop and like acknowledge every joke, but that, that was, one that was so bad. That one was so bad that you won the ghost ship month. I know that next next week is still a ghost ship one. We're not going to top that. It's not going to get worse than that. No, that was so bad. <laughs> Oh, man, man, I thought I won that one last week. Was, you still, you, you took the cake. Just I just knocked out of the park. I'm probably not going to talk the rest of your segment that's now. Probably, oh, that's <laughs> a good one. I will go for it. So it's not what? able to make port. <laughs> that's all the further we've gotten in the history. Or Sherry or Merlot. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the, this, <laughs> the Flying Dutchman, it's doomed to sail the ocean's <gasps> Forever. Okay. Sailors would view the ship as an omen of potentially fatal weather, like hurricanes like and things the, oh, like that. Um, not like the red sky in the morning thing, but rather just the flying Dutchman coming. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You see the flying Dutchman? Oh shit. Oh, okay. Okay. <gasps> so what would happen is they would like look out and they would see this ship that wasn't floating. Like in the water? Right. Okay. So it looked like there was space between the bottom of the ship. So it's almost like it was floating, but in the totally different meaning of the word. Like (gasps) flying. Oh. Oh. Like the flying Dutchman. And now I Um, get it. Now I get it. (laughs) Well, there we go. Yeah, so uh, you know what would happen is the Dutchman it would um it, it would try to hail ships uh that it had come across and it would try to pass along letters or messages because it wasn't able to bring them to land or these messages would end up being for people who were already long dead. Okay. So oh, that was kind of like the legend itself of the of the Dutchman. Can I ask when you say it, because I've heard this before with a few of the ships who said, hail them. What does that mean? Like there's like- Hi, hail, like, hey, I'm hailing here. a cab. And they can see a person doing that? Uh, well, they have the- uh, the You have spy lights, glass. you have- um, oh, Spyglass. The, d- the spyglass, you have, what What was it called? The um, day signals where it had, yeah, the like big dark circles and stuff like that cool. that they'd fly up. I just want to make sure it wasn't a person. A lot person, of times so there like, was, was what they you know, like. flags also had, you know, Know, different colored different flags. Different meanings. Meant, like, yep. what was it like? A was it a red flag meant like take no quarter? Like that's what you worried about because it means they're not going to take any survivors. They're just going to kill everybody. Kill everybody. Mm-hmm. The they're Jolly Roger. That's just yeah the pirate flag. Yeah. Is, anyway, thank you yeah. for going on that. I just want to make sure I understand. No, that's that part. okay. Yeah, cool. hailing like hailing a taxi. Or yeah, something yeah. Like I just that. wanted to know if we were seeing a person or not. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. Isn't there an app called I Hail? The taxi cab app. It's a, it's yeah. a taxi it is the cab. taxi. Oh yeah, no, okay. I knew that part about it. I just wanted to see. If I know, we but now you got me derailed. Now I'm thinking about it. There's other ways to <laughs> see, hail. Don't I'm not worry the only about one. it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so what sailors had described it was a Dutch merchantman ship. Okay. So it's basically like the step down from a man of war. Merchant man. It's a merchant man. Ship. Okay. Yeah, cool. that's one word. The merchant worst man. superhero. Yes, he was a peddler. Okay, cool. <laughs> I got Jake he... with that one. <coughs> Did you get whiskey in your nose? Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay, oh, it. That's the worst. Oh, oh. <laughs> that anyway. They'll teach you about port. The port, the port. Um, <laughs> so, that's your payment. Um, they would describe that ship with uh, as the merchant man, and it would it'd have 
t- um, tattered sails and a ghostly ghoulish glow. So oh. either green, red, most or Most of the blue, stories were but red. Most of them fall in that red. Were red? I, I imagine green in my head, but I know that's what it is in SpongeBob. And so, Scooby-Doo and stuff and like Scooby-Doo. that. Scooby-Doo. Yeah, okay, a cool. lot of cartoons would make it green. green. Also. It looks creepier. Uh, yeah, it does. Well, it also looks, it looks more like blood. poisonous in terms of when it's yeah. the green oh. type of an idea. Yeah. Yeah. So we a lot of it's us the will PG-13 associate mo- that with. Color. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, so the stories of of this uh, ship, it seemed to have originated like during the 17th century of the golden age of the Dutch mm-hmm. East India Company oh. and the Dutch Maritime Power. So, oh my gosh, I was just... I went on a Wikipedia dive. On okay, this. heck yeah! I'm not. It gonna... works because we're in the water. It... <laughs> keep going. We're he's, all making he's, bad jokes. He's today. trying really hard. Wow, to he to me. really wants I to catch up. I can't beat him though. I can't. <laughs> when you're good, you're I'll good. Never win. When you're good, you're it, good. Um, they so like the Dutch East India Trading Company. They were um, <sighs> to to say that they were massive is an understatement. Okay. They truly had a monopoly and it was basically the first global supply chain stock market and it all came from that company. So at, of this time we could almost compare it to like an Amazon. Well, like even more type I mean, of an yeah. idea. They were yeah. the they Amazon were the only of the world. One. But they were the only yeah. ones. Okay. And they were it's, so good at protecting their waters and, and vested interests and things like that. They became a military. They almost like they it ran was. Oh. Yeah. So we kind of already talked about this a little bit. Remember uh the uh Castle of Good Hope? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. Dutch East India Company. That was, was them. There. I was trying to remember if that was because that's also, they're even like in Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, yes. they're everywhere. Yeah. Okay. So when you see VOC, like uh, on the cannons and stuff like that, yeah. that's actually the, the Dutch words for Dutch East trading or for oh, Dutch East Company. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's what that's what all of that means. Okay. But I bring it back to Good Hope because yes. that's one of the primary areas that people would see the Flying Dutchman. That was going to be my question because you've kind of made it be like seem like it's everywhere right now, but it's mm-hmm. so mostly near Good Hope. So there's a couple of different there's a couple of different uh, I guess places that it kind of falls into. Okay. Um, there's it depending upon, I guess the captain of the Flying Dutchman yep. depends upon where you're going to see it. Yeah. Okay. So one of the first ones you have, um, he was a, um, uh, da, 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 da. okay. So, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, Van der Decken. Van der Decken. Van der Decken. That's a very Ger- we, uh, Dutch sounding name. Yeah, very Dutch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's Jake's new name. Um, he was. <laughs> It, it, what he was known for is he was known to gamble his salvation on a rash pledge around the Cape of Go- Good Hope. What do you mean by rash pledge? Can you explain that to me? God, I dare you. Oh, like, yeah, like hubris. Like, you'll never right. strike me down. Okay, like, got me it. God himself would not haunt, would not God, God himself haunted. would not let aliens take me. You know, like last like week. Last week <laughs> that whole thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, so you have, so one of the primary ones is Vander Decken. He's Vander the one Decken. that you're okay. going to see around the Good Hope area. Okay. And he is, he's actually really known, um, potentially really, he's based off of a, true dutch uh captain who was um his name was uh bernard fakas Fa- <laughs> <laughs> i'm into it okay I, yep. I don't think that was the pronunciation <laughs> but gonna, we'll go with it i'm gonna go with it is. i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you to pronounce this one Fuchs. then f-o c-k c-k Fuchs. easy yes easy yes uh for for k fuchse <laughs> uh fuchse Funke uh, from the rest all, of all that we're saying is better than what you just said. I know, no, I, I like, think what I said was the best. I mean, we've um, all seen Meet the Parents, so we know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he was the 17th century uh, captain for the Dutch East India Company, and he was renowned for the uncanny speed of his trips from the Dutch Republic to Java. So he, it was like known that this man could get them there the fastest. Dutch Republic to Java, you said? Yep. What's Java? Down like past, area? like okay, yeah. So I'm gonna draw a map for you here, and everybody that is on... just on the other side of Africa, <laughs> yeah. Basically. Okay, so they cool. were able to go around Cape of Good Hope, and he was able to go to over to area. the other side. That makes sense. Cool. Um, and he, so it, where was it? Yeah, he was just kind of known to be another person who would like, um, I guess challenge God and challenge the devil wow. type of a thing. So his fast Dang. trips caused people to suspect that he was aided by the devil. 
Okay. Yeah. They're I mean, like, there's I, yeah. no way that this soul guy's soul a soul. Soul. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, uh, yeah. So he was he was known to be potentially the model for that particular uh, that for that captain. I would imagine so. There's, but the other legend, uh, he it's it's a uh, Captain Falkenberg. Falkenberg. Yep. That's Falkenberg. A more fun name. Except he sails forever through the North Sea. So this one is the area up by the Netherlands. Okay. 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 So you have basically all your two over different the place. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why it still is kind of all over the place. Either right? way, it's all pretty much Atlantic area, almost maybe into Indian Ocean a little bit, but not we, Pacific at we'll all. We'll get into later. But most of the sightings are around the Good Hope area. Good Hope area. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Most. The majority of them yeah. are. Yeah. 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 It's, it's so, all okay. over the place. Okay. It's mar- cool. It's maritime. Legend. Maritime it's everywhere. Just, yeah. It's maritime it's a ship. legend. It floats. Um. <laughs> well, this one flies. Mm-hmm. Um. And so it's yeah. D- um. Captain Falkenberg. He was known for the idea with him is that he was playing a dice for his soul with the devil, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's what ended up causing him to be the permanent captain. Because he lost. Yeah. Because he lost. Yep. Exactly. That's that's cool. I love that kind of story. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So we have yeah. Those are those are kind of I guess where a lot of those had come from. But ultimately, it was like this was still a a legend by sailors. Mm-hmm. And how did it become the thing that it is? That's yeah. always what I want to know, right? Yes. So you have the first literary reference, where it's the first time that it definitely showed up in print, was in. I have to move my mic because I can't it's see all through new. it. Yeah, yeah. Um. So. It, like counts. nineteen or seventeen ninety is mm-hmm. about the first time that it had come through. Okay, uh, and it was uh, by John McDonald. Okay, he had a farm. Uh, <laughs> come the on, weather. <laughs> okay, that might be worse. No, no, it wasn't. But still, <laughs> it was to herself. That was the <laughs> reason why it wasn't as worse. <laughs> I had to finish the sentence in my head. Um, Okay, so the weather was so stormy that the sailors said that they saw the flying Dutchman. The common story is that the Dutchman came to the Cape in distress of weather and wanted to get into harbor but could not get a pilot to conduct her and was lost. And that that ever since, in very bad weather, her vision appears. That makes sense why they can't go into port then. Yes. Oh. So that was so that's like one of the first literary references. Okay. That cool. it came up in writing. Um, past that, it uh, came through um, uh, a couple of other books, including one by um, George Barrington, and he talked a little bit more about the. Um, oh gosh, he he would talk more about the overall superstition of sailors as well, including a, a Dutch man of war that it was lost in the Cape of Good Hope and every soul on board had perished. Mm-hmm. You know, so he he would bring all of this um all of this in here like that. And then uh, past that, oh, there was one that I actually wanted to read. Oh, um, yeah, <laughs> the crew of this vessel were supposed to have been guilty of some dreadful crime in yeah. the infancy of navigation and to have been stricken with pestilence and are therefore obtained to tra- to traverse the ocean on which they perished so yeah it it just kind of keeps it kind of keeps going on with that but um the the it started bringing in the folklore of uh Vanderdecken and his playing with the devil. Oh yeah, I like yeah. that. Okay. So, yeah, the way that um that a specific magazine um had talked about it. It's called Black uh the Blackwoods Edinburgh Magazine and this started being published in 1817 all the way through 1980. Wow. So it was a very oh, long, very long. Nice. Published magazine. This article from um, 1812, it had described um, her master's name was Vanderdecken. He was such a staunch seaman, and he would have his own way in spite of the devil. So that's just how he was described. Okay. Jacob. I'm a child. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, knew, <laughs> I knew he'd laugh at that joke, and I was like, I got to not, because I got to make sure. I, I'm, I know. I'm, there's I'm a the lot child. of seamen here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, why is that funny? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get Jake, it. can you explain it to me? <laughs> Jake, can you, what's no? Cool? Just go. What's funny? No, okay, we're done. <laughs> you want um, to explain it to me? <laughs> no, so, no, no. I have a show and tell. Show works. and tell. No, no, you keep that to yourself. <laughs> this is YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, so the um, Hulu. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Yep. HBO. Um, so there was a. <laughs> 
sightings had been reported all the way from the 16th century up through the 20th. Like, okay. So they they had these, and again, they kind of saw it as this ship where you would see it almost floating above the water, so it was kind of flying. Well, there's a couple of ideas of what might that might actually be. Mm-hmm. Have you ever heard of a Fata Morgana? No. At least every day of my life. Fata Morgana. Fata Morgana. Okay. Okay. So basically what you have is there's different levels, and I did not know this until do, until starting to read into this, mm-hmm. different levels of mirages. Hmm. Oh, mirages. Okay, like the ones we see in the desert when we see an oasis, but it's not actually that. Like the the thing we see in TV. Yes, so a mirage is, it's not a hallucination because a mirage actually can also be captured on film. So, and it's, it's, it has (gasps) almost the appearance of a shared illusion. That is, it can be captured on film? Mirages? Yeah. Yes, you can actually take pictures of it. And That's I even insane. have some here for you if you want to look. Okay. Um, so what it, what it does is it kind of has, um, there's a difference really between the air temperatures of different bands and it actually refracts and bends the light. <gasps> so if there is an object way far off in the distance, what it does is it kind of bends and stretches the image of that object. Interesting. So that in this case, it'd be a ship that we're seeing then. Right. So um, because oh. you're on water, you could be capturing potentially something so far off in the distance. You also could be capturing a different image of a cloud way up in the sky. Mm. Um, And you would typically see this on calm days before storms. Interesting. Interesting. Oh. So, um, I love kind of the history behind on that one. Yeah, oh, there's... Cool. I, this mirage Very thing science. got so cool. Um, but it ca- but they are actually categorized. Logic. Um, so you have All inferior that. mirages, you have superior mirages, and okay. then you also have Fata Morganas, which is what this particular mirage falls under. Possibly. 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 Um what so a uh, Farta I'm dropping shit. Whoa. Um a farta. A Fata Morgana. It's a complex form of a superior mirage. So this particular one, it's, I mean, like tons more science, tons more reflected light go into it. And this image can come across being so big that everybody else can see it. Okay. And it's absolutely huge and detailed. Okay. So it can create entirely new shapes that are not actually reflective because what it's doing is it's bending the image of something small and it's making it massive. Okay. Okay. I I would say the only argument against that would be just because of how many people have seen this. I mean, that's so weird that right. Well, through the years, the same thing's been seen. Yeah. No, they have a lot of they have a lot of of the same things. But um, but Fata Morganas specifically though they um so they're uh it it was named after a type of fairy house. It was um it's a it was named after a sorceress, Morgana the Fairy, due to a belief that these mirages, often seen um, in straits and waters and things like mm-hmm. that, um, they were actually fairy castles or false land that was conjured up by her witchcraft to lure sailors. Oh. So that's how it got the name. This I just thought that was witchy, really cool. Very mermaidy. It too, was super even. cool. Right? Honestly, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm just gonna like show this to you. If oh, oh, Jesus, I hit the we knew it was gonna happen. Mic. You're moving. Okay, everyone knew it was gonna happen. So when you look at it over here, it's kind of it is a little hard to see. But if you look, what it does is we'll it post this online. Yeah, it actually has these images where it looks like a, sh- a ship or something is sailing at you, but it's up and floating. Okay, it's I, not. I'm gonna trust you on that one. It's just a little too far now with our new studio space. But so these I are like images it. that you actually can capture almost on camera. Looks UFO. Okay, UFO. It almost looks UFO ish. Um, or kind of freaky. Though. Yeah. So what it would do is it, it could also or like reverse an image. It could like completely reverse it. So that's why it, um, when you watch something like Pirates of the Caribbean could and sh- they go upside down and everything, and that's a whole part oh. of it. That's actually part of the Flying Dutchman's uh, lore. Could, anyway, could you spell that out so if people want to look up the yeah the Fata Morgana? Yeah, yeah, the word. Spell it out real quick. F A T A space M O R G A 
and A. Yeah, I think people look it up. Very cool. It's, very it's cool. also Morgana. yeah, also called a mirage. So if you were to look up mirages in their different levels, You'd find this that is the one. top level of mirage. Top level. This Ooh. is the top level. Okay. This one, this, this one's over shit. superior. I, I love how in this 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 is this episode. I'm going to take a step back and be a little meta here with this episode. Normally, we're trying to figure out why Jake's story isn't correct. In this one, we kind of had to almost be like, but why so many people with this one ship? Like we're going, almost exactly. going backwards with Where it. Like, there is a, cool. there's a scientific it's reasoning so cool. that could be, but it's like, but that's so weird. I know. For over the years, the same it thing just, being But seen. in terms of like maybe them seeing spots. this mm-hmm. floating and flying. Oh, I mean, that, that gives that definitely, a reason. Or why it is that they oh, see oh, yeah. it upside down. It's definitely it does that. giving reasons. It's just, it's just, just like ghost sightings in general to me. Yeah, somebody seeing something, you go, oh, it could be all these reasons, but it's the, when the same people or this different people see the same thing over and over again throughout the years. That's when you go, hmm. hmm. Yeah, it's that's just weird. It's, it's what's interesting to me about the paranormal is that you can go both sides at it, and both sides can be right and wrong at the exact same yeah, time. No, so it, that's why it's, it's cool. But, but possibly paranormal. Yeah. <laughs> we found um, it. This is yeah. So I I found all of that to be that's cool. That's cool though. Just really cool. <laughs> yeah, and cool. Uh, so ultimately, though, you know, the Flying Dutchman has truly embedded itself into our pop culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. it is in everything. Everything from, like, Scooby-Doo to Andromeda to Supernatural, which I totally dig. Okay. Um, SpongeBob. Uh, uh, yep, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Pirates episodes. of the Caribbean. There's tons of literary references. Um, there's is that the one operas. that Davy Jones r- drove? Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yep. And, and one of the legends that is, that's another little legend that was not this Davy guy. Jones. And, they draw, and they brought oh. back the dice Oh yeah, in that yeah, one. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And Dead Man's Chest. Yes, that's yes. right. Yeah. Very so they, cool. Yeah. So they I bring that back, that. and that's also an additional part of this. Like, so there's cool. there's so many like there's a, interesting references. I when I started those. digging in this, I was like, oh, that's from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, the oh, that's jo- from Pirates of the Caribbean. The Davy Jones legend is that cool. maybe the name is just a moniker. Yeah. Right? Like. Other I mean, souls yeah, are taking Jones over, and Davy Jones is just the moniker of it. Like it's not an actual person. It's. Oh. Yeah. So it's yeah. everywhere. Okay. Yeah, there's video games, radio dramas from the 30s would do cool. different like special ghost oh. episodes on the Flying so cool. Dutchman. I always thought that was awesome. And then there's also a really and I didn't realize it for some reason, but then I heard it and I was like, "Oh yeah, I know this one." Um, Wagner wrote an opera on the Flying Dutchman. What? It actually translates into the Flying Dutchman. Is Wagner mm. is he Dutch? But I don't know. No, he's German. German. Okay. Um, but yes, yeah, so he had taken it and he he had absolutely gone with it. Very and cool. Because it's, it's your. I know. Well, also because it's your birthday week. <gasps> um, I did find one extra little thing, and I was like, you might appreciate this. I appreciate a lot of things. Happy birthday, by the way. Yeah, Thanks. happy birthday. Um, Honus Wagner, Wagner, actually, excuse me, because he was a German the baseball a- player. Yes. yes. Okay. Do you know what his nickname was? I have no idea. I would guess the Flying Dutchman. It is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because he played for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's. <laughs> <laughs> his name was. Yeah, so... That's awesome. Honestly, okay. Wagner. Cool. Yep. Very yep. cool. That's a fun one. I like that that's a little really cool. little titty bit in the middle of that one. Exactly. Very cool. Lisa, I might mean this more than I've ever meant it before, but hey. Good job. This one was it, in the ways of like how the Mary Celeste was different for Jake. This one was very different for you, and it was yes. awesome in that way. I loved it. It so was really cool. cool, but ultimately, it's like oh, what? What is the ball. Flying Dutchman? It's a legend of a ship, but there's reasoning that for shows it. That's what's so that's weird. What's so cool. Is, but scientifically a or literally, the liter- literal like, literature wise, I don't know how to say. I mean, there is literally re- there's you know. literary references. <laughs> literary. Thank you. What, there that go. brought it to different things. I mean, it. Was, I know words good. Uh, <laughs> me good, me good word. It's, it's been responsible for <laughs> mixing in with a lot of different um, lores and legends that have then been brought into popular culture, and then you find it in movies, and it's it's, it's awesome, nuts. very cool. Well, yeah. Lisa, thank you so much for that That's history great. and almost like science class thing we got there. Nice <laughs> job. You guys can high five easier now in this new studio, but you know what I can do easier? Games, game time. Hey. That's right. It's time for games. Let me move my microphone over here slightly so I can read my games a little bit better. All right, Jake. Last week, you guessed that we were going to be doing Galaxy Quest. Yep. I told you you were wrong. Yep. And I stand by that because we're doing Galaxy Quest and Spaceballs this week. We're doing two in one. So I'm going to give you a 
a fact about okay. one of the four spaceships, two from Galaxy Quest, two from Spaceballs, Oof. and you're going to need to give me a little bit, or give me the answer to that one. So, so just so everybody knows, Spaceballs is the spoof of Star Wars. Yes. Galaxy Quest is the spoof movie of Star, uh, Trek. Star Trek. Yes. And Lisa, you, you said you've never see- seen it, oh, which I'm- is funny because right before this, you told me, I love Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman's in Galaxy I know. Quest, so you need to. This see might that be one we need to watch either tonight or tomorrow. Oh, I honestly. love it. Uh, okay, you would love I it. Have, I, I, I think have you'd to love throw it. this out there because I know that there's some people who are going to hear some of these answers that I have, and they're going to get really disappointed in me very quickly. <laughs> okay, when I watched Spaceballs when I was younger, um, I've never seen it in English. Oh, you watched it like in a class? That no. You had to- we were watching it with a group of friends. Somebody's foot hit the frickin' remote. It went into French, and we thought that was the movie. Oh, now you need to and watch that one, And we couldn't too. believe that that was the case. And so, but then it ended up being just the most stupid joke that we just watched this entire movie in French. French. Oh, so boy. So well, I've never seen Spaceballs in English. I've got some <laughs> bad news for you. Mine's fully in English. So here we go. Your five, four spacecrafts are Spaceball 1, Eagle 5, The Judgment Ship, and Protector 2. I'm not going to give you anything past that because it tells you everything else. So, the first fact is this ship is a Winnebago Chieftain 33 class ship. Which one is that one about? Oh, I know Jake's which movie that is, answer. but what is that one called? Lisa's got hers. You both say Eagle 5. That is correct. That That's was... the one with Worf. Barf. Barf? Yes. Oh my God. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, I'm right. so angry today. I just know it. John we got we to gotta move yeah. on. It is John Candy. Or from Candy. Star Trek, though. Uh, we got to move Thank on you. or else we're just going to be I know, so this mad is going to be the whole time. <laughs> I know. Next one. Some. Commanded by Dark Helmet. Who commanded that? Lisa's got hers. Jake's got his. Spaceball one is the correct answer. You are tied two to two. Next up. Generally destroy, destroys the world that it visits. Which one does that? Uh, you both say the Judgment Ship. Correct. That is correct. Pretty easy with a name like that. Next up, resembled the Rebel Blockade Runner. Which one did that? Wait. Yes. You say Eagle 5, Jake. Lisa says Protector 2. You are both wrong. That was Spaceball. That is the Spaceball 1. Oh, yeah. So, next up. Okay. Meant to resemble a fictional NSEA ship. What do you got for that one? You both say Protector 2. That is correct. That was their, basically, Enterprise. Enterprise thing. Okay. Exactly. All right. Able to split in two. Which one you got? Which one you got? Which one do we think it is? Lisa says Spaceball 1. Jake says Protector 2. Jake took a 5 to 4 lead. I tried to trick you into doing the same thing because you're like, it splits in two and it's like the Enterprise. So, yeah. Oh, oh no, it right. turns into a vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. It doesn't split in two. I hope that wasn't <sighs> your next hand. Next up, it is not. I hope it was. Crashed on the Planet of the Apes. This ship crashed on the planet of the apes. Jake says Spaceball 1. Lisa says Eagle 5. Jake is ahead 6 to 4. The Spaceball 1 crashed on the planet of the apes. Did it? They it blew it up. Because it looks like a. It looks like <laughs> the maid looks like it, it's a Statue of Liberty when it crashes. crashes. So it looks like it's the Statue of Liberty, Statue in, Liberty the desert. Oh, in the desert. The I bridge. need to rewatch They're this. They're crawling out of the. No- yeah, I can't We got to watch all of these oh movies. God. We'll watch them in together. English. I love it. All right. Next up has a kitchenette. Not a full kitchen, a kitchenette. Jake has his answer. Lisa has hers. Eagle five for both. You're both correct. Seven to five. Jake we is ain't found ahead. Shit. <laughs> All right, next up. The race that created this ship has to keep confidence up or the ship will weaken. And by race, I mean like the alien race. What you got? Jake's got his. Lisa's got hers. Protector two, you both say? No, that was the judgment ship. That's the judgment ship? Mm-hmm. Okay. That was between those. Next up, the one twelfth scale model of this ship sold for twenty eight thousand dollars in two thousand and seventeen. Which one is that one about? Jake's got his. Lisa's got hers. Spaceball one by Lisa. Eagle five by Jake. Jake got another Damn point. It. Eight to five. 
that's awesome. Next up. I would love to see a Lego set with that. <laughs> Ooh, that would be oh, awesome. Oh, Lego, sorry. hit us up. <laughs> we want to do that with you. Anyway, we probably wouldn't. We don't have rights to it. But anyway, hit us up. <laughs> All right. Attacked <laughs> by Krog Vorst during the movie. Um. What you got? You both say Protector 2. That is correct. Okay. All right. Nine to six. Jake is ahead. Next up. Crash landed in the parking lot of a science fiction convention. What you think? What you think? What oh, you think? Oh, he did that way too quick. Oh, um, yes, he did. Jake already got his. Lisa says Eagle 5. Jake says Protector 2. Jake is ahead 10 to 6. That was the Protector 2. Maybe you should see good movies. On their way to bring them back movie. to the science fiction convention that they were stolen from. Anyway, the last question of today, and I am going to butcher this, so I'm going to try my hardest. Also known as Ya 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 in the Thermian language. Jake's got his answer. Lisa says the judgment ship. Jake says protector too. Lisa did get another oh, point okay. towards it was the that end. One. I knew it was one of those. But Jake ends up winning the space balls and uh, Galaxy Quest one. But I will say, actually, we have a segment from a book coming up on this one. We didn't oh. do anything in the uh, space balls Galaxy Quest era, but there is a little bit of something else in here. I just trying to hold my hand. In the beginning, the universe was created. This has made a lot of people very angry and has been widely regarded as a bad move. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Paranormal. I'll be your guide on this adventure off of your planet Earth into the vast unknown. Well, at least it's unknown to you. We're going to be putting a babblefish into your ear now. This is going to be slightly painful, but not any more painful than Vogue and poetry. Let's hear the story of Jake and Lisa and how they survived the destruction of Earth as it went to create a new galactic inner space bypass. For as long as they have been on this planet, Jake and Lisa have felt like they do not belong. Little did they know that no one would belong on Earth in just 12 short minutes from now. Thankfully, they have a friend that is not descended from apes. Rather, he was from a small planet near Alpha Centauri. It was he who saved them by hitchhiking onto one of the demolition ships. At the end of the day, while most humans were panicking about their destruction, they all did agree that it was time for Earth to be destroyed anyway. And you see, the Vogons were staunch bureaucrats and were simply doing their job. They were the ones with the demolition ships. It is time for the destruction of Earth. It has been in the planning office of your galaxy for the past 50 Earth years. If you don't want to take an interest in local politics, then I have no sympathy for you. Commence destruction. Luckily for Jake and Lisa, they had their towels. And a friend in Davis, the one we talked about earlier that is not descended from apes. He got them onto the ship. From there, they hitchhiked their way across the galaxy, finding everything paranormal they could find. But in the outer worlds from Earth, most paranormal things were just called normal. You see, the human brain was simply too narrow thinking to grasp just how para the world got. They simply chalked it up to ghosts that had nothing better to do than knock over a teacup from time to time. Yes. Or aliens that simply wanted to probe one's anal cavity. Oh, dear. There's only one type of alien that does that, but little did they know it was humans. Everyone else just stayed away from the damn things. They bounced around for a while, but finally landed on a planet that the people have cheekily named after a Dutch ghost ship on the planet Earth, the Flying Dutchman. It had a lot of similarities to the ship. While the ship is legendary for being seen by sailors, the planet is legendary for being a bureaucratic pit where nothing gets done. The ship <laughs> sank a long time ago. The planet's morale sunk a long time ago as well. You see the pattern. There they ran into Marvin the Robot. All right, you two. You're supposed to come with me. Now walk. Or oh, don't. It doesn't really matter anyway. Life is just so pointless. I've got a big brain and nothing to do but go get new bureaucrats. Now, you may be asking yourself, weren't there three? And the answer to that would be yes. You see, Davis was in the bathroom at this specific time. He came back later but couldn't find them, so he waited for a little less than what would have been a respectful amount of time, then went on. But he did find an audio file of Jake and Lisa. Yes. <laughs> he will make it into a podcast for the Hitchhiker's Guide 
to the paranormal. As for Jake and Lisa, well, they never died per se. It is impossible to die on the Flying Dutchman, but their souls died in a bureaucratic and fluorescent light filled <laughs> conference room where they simply answer phones to transfer the person to the exact same department and never giving them a chance to hang up, otherwise known as health insurance. <laughs> anyway, thank you for reading The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Paranormal. Don't panic. And that was Hitchhiker's Guide to the Paranormal. Have, have you ever read that book? I have. I love that book. I'm asking Lisa. Oh, Lisa, She's the troublemaker you? here. Have you seen the movie? Ooh, oh, that's... I... Also got Alan Rickman in it. Not so it. you're saying you like Alan Rickman. You haven't seen two of his best sci-fi featured oh, things. Oh, no. There's a lot that I still get to enjoy. That's how exactly. I'm going to choose to That's look at this. That's a good way this. to put it. I like it. I have so much left to enjoy. Marvin the Robot that I put in there, that is voiced by Alan Rickman. So yes. a very depressed robot because he is so smart that he just has become depressed. So oh. that is... <laughs> yes. Anyway... I, and Jake. I know I know some of the movies that she's seen so many times before, and it mm -hmm. just makes me hurt. Hey, you also like Noises Off. Shut up. Oh, Noises I'm, Off is good. But you know what's better? <laughs> Jake's Scary Stories. Jake, hey, hit Jake. us up. Hey, The Flying Dutchman. Ooh. Right? Uh, in Dutch, let's see if I can do this here. The Legend Hollander. Hollander. I knew the Hollander part. Good job. Uh, is a legendary ghost ship from the 17th uh, century. It's nautical lore. Uh, we talked about it quite a bit. Lisa did it. Uh, but this famous spectral ship, which has existed for hundreds of years, is said to occur out of the sea and hail signals to nearby ships as lawn, the lawn dead crew trying to contact the living. Mm -hmm. The presence is frightful and is seen as a harbinger of doom to many ships that see it. Mm. Uh, often It often involves storms or other hazards that maybe you're going to come and sink those ships. So it's usually a very bad thing. What is he warning us about? <laughs> the flying, oh, no! The Dutch. Flying Dutchman itself has been was said to be a Scare doomed cuts. vessel of a captain <laughs> who went mad at sea and somehow damned himself. We'll get into the different... Lisa already kind of touched on some of that, but we'll talk a little bit more about that Ooh. here. Um, damned himself and his crew uh, to sail the seven seas forever. Uh, but the weather is said to change whenever it's around to the worse. Uh, another sign is its own. It's is that because ta catastrophes will happen. People will some an accident will happen when uh -huh. the Dutchman arrives. So that's a lot of signals. They oh, say. very harbingery. Yes, I get it. That word. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the captain that we talked about. Uh, um, the the main folklore and the mystery shrouding the uh, vessel are not uh, really about the vessel itself. It's more about the guy who is supposed to, the skipper of the vessel. Uh, and a lot of think it is his Hendrik van der Decken. Mm -hmm. uh, Hendrik van der Decken. Whose deep contemplation about the plight of the seamen and the result. Re, sorry. And, <laughs> what about Come contemplation on. of the seamen? Sorry, Come Hendrik. on. You stumbled over that word, didn't you? <laughs> Your own <laughs> joke. You saw child. semen and stopped. <laughs> oh, I giggled. And giggled. Oh, geez. To the, okay. So <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's okay, great. according to the stories. Uh, Captain van der Decken was uh, working for the Dutch East India Company during the 17th century and was also uh, one of two men who was supposedly captained this ship that was later known as the Flying Dutchman. The he Flying was, Dutchman, yep. okay. Him uh, and Falkenberg. Yep. Falkenberg. It was during that uh, time uh, he was on a voyage to Amsterdam. The, the Captain van der Decken thought he wanted to establish a settlement at the Cape of Good Hope. Okay. In South Africa. We talked yep. about that place. Yep. He, wanted to make the, he wanted to be the one to put a settlement there. Okay. But as the vessel started around the Cape, a terrible storm hit, putting the vessel in danger of capsizing. And his crew argued with him to turn around and like put the pressure on him, but he ordered his crew to go ahead with it. <gasps> in accordance with the anecdote, it was also said that he, uh, the captain uttered to himself to bring the vessel around the Cape, even if it meant that he had to sail this vessel until doomsday. Okay. So he, mm. he, so he, he cursed daring, himself. Almost like he cursed himself. Oh, body hubris. The statement made uh, while the vessel was on, on its last dregs said to be brought a ghostly plight on the vessel to sail the seas forever without making ground in any port or harbor ever again. Um, there's also another side of the story where they actually said it was actually a fight between the captain and a mutant, a mutiny. Okay. Group on yeah. the ship uh, where basically that argument of please turn around turned into a full on mutiny and the captain goes mad during this and eventually <gasps> mur murders the rebel leader. Oh, basically. okay. And as the body, as he threw the rebel leader 
over the edge, and the second he hit the water, the vessel spoke to the captain about the decision to press, and the captain replied that that same thing about it'll be till the day of judgment. So it's like the, the world itself started questioning him. And the vessel, what do you mean? Like the vessel is in yeah, the ship the, itself? the ship itself oh. started to Ooh. question him in his, wow. own, in his own head, basically. Oh, oh that's Talk freaky. about walls to talk. That'd be nuts. Oh, so yeah, he uh, definitely cursed. A lot of people think that the captain himself, he's the one who He's the one who cursed. Whether the it was ship. like what you talked about where he made a deal with the devil the or dice or game. he just the dice game or he just, he just cursed, he cursed or... himself by his own his He dared it to his happen. own madness basically. He cursed dared it him to happen. Ego. Yep. Yes. So, yeah. there has been a ton of sightings. Uh, okay. and actually well reported sightings. That's the strange okay. part. Um they all seem to be Uncanny in similarities. Uh, I, she has a, it always has a strange glow. Red is most of the time. Even during the day, it'll have this red glow. Uh, and most of the time, the stories have to do with uh, them trying to make contact with the sailors or uh, kind of signaling the tent to get the boat right up to it. Um, oh, freaky. And, but, and, what are they going to do? And also, the, it's always strange because even in the calmest weather... The sails mm-hmm. will be at full up, like whether usually if that's weird to have it on a cal- calm day or or sorry on a it, on a bad weather you don't have your s- full sail out yeah yeah and yeah. it always has its full sail out okay and it looks like that it's no not losing control at all even in bad weather oh uh, so yeah so it's already defying physics when yeah. it's approaching them oh, the so myth, it doesn't make logical sense the myth kind of emerged in the 1600s uh, various sightings of the ghost vessel were reported in the Cape of Good Hope all these sightings happened when the weather was extremely stormy and the gales were lashing hard it was also been retold that countless times that letters were passed onto those ships uh, from the Dutchmen so the actually crew of the Dutchmen would come on with letters and try to give them to send messages onto people like legitimate physical letters mm-hmm. not ghost letters right? and okay. the opening of those Ooh. letters uh, by the crew of the other ship, resulted in the ship getting destroyed, or the crew, <gasps> or the crew men you're not dying, to have or getting sunk down, mail. or something. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a federal That's why offense. the laws around. It's to protect us. All right, so here's some of the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so here's here's some of the uh, sightings that, or the sightings and also the writings about it. Uh, uh, George, we you talked about George Barrington, correct? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Se- in 1795, he wrote the little thing. I'm going to kind of go a little bit more. He uh, he served time in uh, one of the bays in Australia, and when he got out, he wrote this uh, legend okay. of the Flying Dutchman. It's a story that he heard. It's a story about the two Dutch ships that sailed together toward the Cape of Good Hope. Yeah. When the storm overcame them, one made it to shore while the other one sank, <gasps> along along with all of its crew. And then this is kind of the first time they really talked about a sighting because when that surviving ship left the cape to head back to europe it encountered <gasps> the ship. No! that same ship ah! in the storm oh, that'd be funny. in the dark clouds crew members believe they saw their companion vessel that sank when the when they arrived at port they told everyone about their ghostly sighting and called it the flying dutchman wow and that's another one of the re- that writing by george barrington is another that's the story he heard and that's kind of another reason they thought it was they got its name by that yeah it that ship Whew. um in Blackwood Magazine in 1821, they write a, quite a, a lot about another writer goes into deep description about Yeah, we the talked legend. about that mm-hmm. one just slightly because mm-hmm. that's the one that like continued until 1980 or something. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. He, he writes this very detailed description of an encounter uh, with this dangerous phantom. Uh, so he writes about uh, the Dutchman approaching another vessel, lowered a boat whose crew... Uh, Crew came on begging the uh, to carry the letters on. To mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. Uh, fortunately, the receiving captain would not take them. Of course, but smart. Here's, here's what actually kind of was written about. Uh, this is what it said in the. This is the quote from the actual writing. Okay. Uh, the next flash of lightning shone far and wide over the <gasps> raging sea and showed us not only the flying Dutchman at a distance, but also a boat coming from her with four men. The boat was within two cables length of our ship's side. One of the men came upon deck and appeared like a fatigued, weather-beaten seaman holding some letters in his hand. Our, sar- our sailors all drew back. The champlain, however, looked steadfastly upon him. Foul weather. Oh. And Vanderdecken wishes to send these letters to his friends in Europe. Our captain now came forward and said firmly, I wish Vanderdecken would put his letters on board his own vessel and rather than mine. 
The stranger replied, we have tried many a ship, but no one will take our letters. So, oh, freaky. That's so, sad. I think it's crazy they're just trying to communicate, too. Like, oh, it, man. Yeah. There's legend that communications always went to people who were probably long dead. Long dead. Like oh, my God. Oh. It was said to be a horrible it. misfortune to have a letter from the Flying Dutchman kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 1823, these are some quick ones. Uh, I got a couple letters kind of scattered in here that are really okay, quick. Okay. Captain okay. Owen of the HMS Levin recorded two sightings in his log. Wait, when was this? Uh, 1823. 1823, okay. 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 In 1880, this is probably, uh, out of all the reports in 19th and 20th century, this is the most well-known sighting. It was by Prince George of Wales, mm-hmm. or the future King George V. Okay. Yeah, he was on a three-year voyage during the, the late his late adolescence in 1880 uh, with his elder brother, Prince Albert, uh, Victor of Wales, okay. and their tutor, John Neil Del- Dalton. Uh, in the Prince's Logs, uh, records the following uh, for the pre-dawn hours of the 11th of July in 1881. So part of this three-year trip, this happened. This is so long ago. Wow. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this it. happened off the coast of Australia in the Bass Strait between Melbourne and Sydney. So okay. in Australia area now. July 11th at 4 a.m., the Flying Dutchman crossed our bows. A strange red light as a phantom ship all aglow, in the midst of which light the masts, spars, and sails of a brig 200-yard distance stood out in a strong relief as she came up to our port bow where also the officer of the watch from the bridge clearly saw her as well. As did the quarterdeck sh- midshipman, O was sent forward at once av- to the forecastle. But on arriving, there was no vestige, no any sign what- whatever of any material ship who has been seen either near or right away to the horizon. The night being clear and the sea calm, though. Thirteen people altogether saw her that night. At 10.45 a.m., the ordinary seaman who had that morning first reported the Flying Dutchman fell from the four topmost <gasps> mast oh! cross trees onto the top top gallant forecastle and was smashed to atoms. Oh, oh so my the, goodness. The first person of those 13 who saw the ship is the one who died. Is the one who died. <gasps> Oh. So this lent further credibility no, about the it. ominous sighting of the vessel among the seafarers of yore. Uh, the sighting of the Flying Dutchman can be repeatedly be found um, in the official publications of the crews of the HMS. Uh, I think it's the Picante. 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 That's Picante sauce. The, the ship they were on. Okay. Are you really? <laughs> That's how I know the word. The salsa. You're yeah. trying so hard. <laughs> That's how I know the word. 1835. You giggle at semen. Shush. <laughs> That sounded so bad in so many other ways. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna, so I'm going back a little bit. 1835, uh, there was a reports of a British vessel that almost went into full collision with the ship. <gasps> what? Uh, it was a stormy night in 1835 when the vessel was approaching under full sail in the middle of a storm. And then right before it hit, it just vanished. Oh, so that's oh thing. Ooh, that's, chicken. That's another thing that there's a couple stories I read about literally the ship getting so close and yeah. just vanishing. And that's why I ha- like the Mirage thing is so good. But there's so many stories though that are like, how the hell does it get within like a hundred yards then? And they still go. No, that I mean that's that's, the, that's, that's not the weird thing. Uh, 1879, the SS Prato- Pretoria. Okay. Uh, saw right. the crew saw the ghost ship. That's uh, these are just ones that are actually written in log books. Mm-hmm. Uh, then there's a big skip to 1911. A whaling ship almost collided with her before it vanished. Another Jeez. one of the collisions. Whew. Wow. In 1923, members of the British Navy saw her and gave documentation to the Society of uh, uh, Psych- Psychical Research. It's psychic. All research. I, had to, I don't. Okay. Never seen okay. it written like that, but that's how it's written. <laughs> Got it. Uh, and on that ship, fourth officer Stone wrote an account of the 15 minute sighting. On 15 January, minutes? January 26th. Oh, wow. Second officer Bennett, a helmsman and cadet, also witnessed the ship at the same time. Stone drew a picture. He had long enough, he actually drew a picture of the Phantom. Bennett corroborated all of it in his account. Wow. Uh, 1939, this one's strange. Uh, on Glen's, Glencairn Beach in South Africa, uh, Pat, bystanders on the beach. Although many sightings of the famous ghost ship have always come on uh, the sea, people on the shore also glimpsed the apparition. In, ni- in 1990, uh, 1939 and 1941, crowds of, the p- crowds of people on Glencairn Beach, South Africa, saw the Flying Dutchman under full sail, full speed on a collision course to land. 
According to the contemporary news reports in 1939 incident, the ship sailed with an uncanny volition heading towards the shores. Uh, bystanders had a long, unobstructed view of the vessel before it disappeared right in front of their eyes. Because it can't make port. <gasps> Almost like they... We're just going to crash into land and it Ugh. disappears. Yeah, Let's just no, see if we seriously. Can do it this time. Exactly. Oh, man. Um, World Freaky. War II. What? Uh, no way. Sighting of no. a vessel was reported during World War II. According to reports, the German submarine U boat under the command of Nazi Admiral Karl Donitz sighted and reported. I'm the sorry. F- Real fast. Carl. Donuts, 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 donuts. I'm into donuts. D O like with the little two dots and I T Z. Okay. okay, I want donuts. Uh, sighted and reported the Flying Dutchman during their voyage through the east of Suez. What? Okay. So, what became of the U boat? That's the problem. We don't know what happened. We knew it was reported over radio. Wait, I we don't know if the well, U boat. It's a harbinger of something bad, but yeah. a U boat might be okay. And this is also a in Nazi German. You boat, we don't know which one's crashed. <laughs> yeah. No, that's true. Actually, <laughs> that's a lot of that was hidden in terms of if we ever actually sunk any U boats, that was something that yeah. it, they didn't it, tell. They yeah. didn't tell. But we have the records of the report. Whew. Oh, Interesting. Uh, Freaky. Nine, and that's a lot of people think that's the last time, but in 1942, there were also four witnesses saw the uh, saw the ship enter t- uh, Table Bay and then vanish the second mm-hmm. they entered the bay. Second Officer Davies and Third Officer Monerset uh, on the HMS Jubilee saw the Flying Dutchman that night. Davis recorded it in the ship's log. Mm-hmm. This is what's nice is there's all these ships ship's log, yeah. that have logs and that... I like it when you find the logs and the mm-hmm. like records, like military records. And, and stuff one, one of the last cool. ones was 1959. The Strat Magellan uh, nearly collided with the ghost ship once again. So even at this thing 50s, sounds like it's like getting angrier mm-hmm. and is like, no, seriously, we're done. Like, we're, just, like, we're, cra- we're crashing. And it's now. also well known at the Cape Point lighthouses, the lighthouse keepers frequently oh see i'm it. sure now that i could see the, the mirage part of it absolutely yeah, uh, from, yeah. uh, fr- from onshore to lighthouse looking out yeah but still it had like but seeing a red glowing ship the and glowing different part. light keepers seeing them during mm-hmm. storms and like you're it's storm mm-hmm. a red light's gonna stick them <laughs> stick out pretty yeah <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah oh well if so, you're seeing it from a if you're seeing it from a lighthouse i'm just saying because one of the pictures is from the angle from a lighthouse yeah. 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 and it it does kind of look all red and everything because there's a sunset going on at the same time. So it does mm-hmm. create a glow. But during and a that storm, specific, But during a storm. That's nuts. Yeah. So that's what I have about the Flying Dutchman. Woo! But I wanted to throw something at you guys because I kind of extra in. pretty well. Okay. Um, the Captain uh, Vander... Okay. Vander Decken? Thank you. Yep. I mean, he was a real person. Yeah. 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 Brennan um, F- uh, F- Fockers. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I'm, Come I on. lost his name. <laughs> okay, so in 1665, uh, he actually built a house for him and his beloved wife, Katrina Vanderdecken. Mm-hmm. Uh, for his success, Willem was bestowed the gold medal of the VOC. Uh, okay. His luck seemed to never end, and but corru- a lot of people said corru- it corrupted him, oh, his success, because yeah. he kind of became obsessed with greed, and he kind of ended up turning to, a lot of people that said by the end, he turned to piracy. Yeah, yeah. That makes um, sense. In secret, though. But when the Dutchman disappeared with him on it, supposedly the same day that it supposedly disappeared, his house caught on fire. <gasps> in later years, the house is still there. They rebuilt. No. I, I, I don't know if it's still there, but they just say in later years. Yeah. This is a well-known ghost. I don't know if it's still there or not. But in later years, uh, those who visited the house of the Vanderdecken still have hear the ghostly footsteps of and the voice of Katrina singing out to her missing husband. And uh, no. this is very Elizabeth Swan. In oh, a diary, we can they read a tale from her diary. Captain Vanderdecken at Easter set sail in stormy weather. He left his bride. His ship chose for the turbulent seas, becoming a phantom cursed to sail for eternity. If you leave the harbor at a moonless night, beware the fates that await. The Dutchman, a toy of devilish lust, appears in the darkness, and never finds rest. Oh. So in this house, the presence of Wilhelm still haunts. The gigantic portrait in the hallway seems to judge you as you enter, and the mirror in the library still shows his presence in behind you. Ah! Ah! Behind the portrait that once hid a smuggler's tunnel that he put his treasures in. Some say the, unex- uh, the unexplicable phantom voice still screams out his infamous quote, as the, and the hall looks like it catches fire once again. In the surrounding no. taverns at the docks, the tale of Vanderdecken's fate is still sun often. 
The lion head statues in and around the house, which resemble the flying Dutchman's figurehead, also judge you as you pass. Some say if you sail, a meeting with the Dutchman is inevitable. Ooh, freaky. Oh, I, I love it. I got goosebumps. I actually for found this, a so. haunted ghost <laughs> house because story of this because whole of the thing. Du- yeah. Oh, nice wow. job. That's that was cool. awesome. Whew. Whew. This and was a all I can say super is like different like fun mari- episode. It's like maritime type of stories. They are hit differently for me. Beautifully I... written mm-hmm. and so terrifying. Yes. yes it is part. a very different level of danger when you are out in the, the sea. Sheep. See, yeah. They're it, great just, written. I can't. Uh uh-uh. uh. I hope I read them okay because oh, man, yeah, that I, was awesome. I always feel so weird when I'm reading the flowery stuff. Like, this could just sound like shit. Yeah, no, it was know. good. It's okay. <laughs> no, it you g- as long as you giggle at Siemens and you know that you're reading that part. <laughs> Shut up. I actually made it through a couple times. I know. You I did. actually had the thought. I was, I was like, oh, you. oh. Did, you, did you didn't see my eye twitch. Yeah. No, I saw, I nice saw, job. I saw, but Jake, I saw your mouth. you did forget the uh, personal sighting of Spongebob in that episode. I know. Um, so nice. um, they... Last time I saw it, uh, I think I was in an AMC theater. Exactly. See, they yeah. got on the ship and they helped the Flying Dutchman fly. Were you a Jack Sparrow or Will Turner girl? Oh, give me Jack Sparrow any day. Okay. I would argue that that whole series of movies is about Will Turner and... Uh, no, it is. And, and Elizabeth yeah. Swan. Yeah. Elizabeth oh, Swan. Yeah, Thank is. you. Anyway. Uh, Although, Jake... no, let's let's rephrase. Penelope Cruz. That's where I went. Yes. Oh, that's the fourth one, right? Yeah. That she's in? Yeah. But Jake, thank anyway. you so much for yeah. those stories. <laughs> they scared the crap out of me and were awesome. I love sailing yeah. things and pirate things. Yeah. Yarg. But... Now it's time to to sail on over to everybody's favorite corner of the ocean. What a segue. The admin corner. <laughs> that, was, that was professional level segue. <laughs> That's right. We're getting there. We'll get, by episode crap. 500, you guys They're all going to be like, they're talking about this? And I didn't even realize That was it. immaculate. But for now, it's not. Um, <laughs> for now, it's just this. Couple of things to talk about. We've got social media. We've got a lot of new followers, actually, recently. So thank you so much for following you. people. We've been posting Aww. on there pretty regularly I love you all. nowadays. We've got our TikToks, our YouTubes as well. Um, If you're watching us right now, you can see us. Hey, good looking. What you got cooking? Um, There's some great stuff there. On top of Want to see Lisa throw her arms around and and hit her mic and flail around. You can see my cool logo over here. You can see the Possibly Paranormal podcast cut into wood, which is pretty cool. All kinds of stuff. I'll get something cool behind me. Brother-in-law? Future brother-in-law? Yeah. Future brother-in-law. Perfect. Um, who gave us that? All kinds of cool stuff, all kinds of chutneys. But the last thing, oh, then Jake, if you could remind me of the thing that I always purposely forget. Please rate and review. Please rate and review. Also, we have Patreon. Thank you so much. But we are going to our final location I'm of Ghost sad. Month. I know. Or Ghost Ship Month, excuse it me. It was actually, yeah, you know what? Final I will be honest. Month, please. <laughs> much to uh, our Patreon Alan's uh, request because he really wanted us to do this topic. and Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which he was a Patreon, so he got to vote. That's how it happened. Exactly. Um, I was nervous about this topic because it is so different. So different. It was awesome. I think we got really found some it. great content. Some really cool stuff. And really speaking good of stuff. our Patreons choosing, that's what we get to do this last episode. Ooh, okay, cool. They always choose the final episode of each and every awesome. month. Awesome, awesome. Yes. So they had four choices on this one. They had three ships and then one museum. And I'll explain in a second, yep. though. But okay. they got to choose from the Joyita, the Kalush, the Orang Madan, or... The Titanic Museum, which Oof. has its own haunting stories. And, and they have, I believe they have pieces yeah. of Titanic in there. Oh, they yes, do, and they that's do. why that's it's haunted. Why. But the one that they chose was the Kalush. Have the you ever heard of that Kalush. one before? No, I've heard of a Kalush. So the Kalush is si- kind of similar to the Flying Dutchman. It is the Flying Dutchman, essentially, of Chile. But it's got some very, very scary stories around it. Just to give you a hint into what it's going to be about, it was nicknamed the Warlock's Ship for a while in Spanish. So, yeah, this is the Kalush. I will send it to you both. Thank you. you. How to spell it? I will not. Um, The spelling's going to be interesting. And that this one, in in the ways that we hear about it from like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, there are tons of stories about it collecting a drowned crew (gasps) in this ship. Collecting a drowned crew, like drowned. Yep. Barnacles? Sure, exactly. <laughs> I just think of the fantastic makeup from... Oh, from Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Exactly. So, the Kalush will be our next episode, final one of March, and then they have to choose our next theme on Patreon as well, which I will actually give a little bit of um, things for that one as well, just so we can 
kind of know what our next theme is going Ooh, to be I like for this April. Idea. So we have, they have four things they can choose from. You should do, which is just every single person who contacts us tells us one they want to see. So, and sometimes have they don't fit into a of? theme. So I put a yep. bunch of them together mm-hmm, and we'll do mm-hmm, that. Mm-hmm. Haunted China, something I've wanted to do for Ooh. a while. Um, please don't bite me which is all about places haunted by vampires or had vampires in their history of some sort. Please tell me no, Edward. Uh, maybe. I don't um, know. We'll see. Okay. And then the last one being what about dinner, which is only haunted bed and breakfasts. So the main one there being the Lizzie Borden. House. Okay. Yeah. That would that make one, sense. And I've seen so many of them that are infested I, by dolls. Those are really, really... So. Cool topics. I'm actually oh, really excited about. I hope yeah. we. I mean, that's like I said, we're gonna do all these themes at some point. But I. Oh, they're all gonna be done. Soon. And yeah. They'll come back. Like if you, if one didn't get voted in, it'll come back again for another vote. Exactly. But yeah, I. Uh, I'm more now trying to figure out what's the bigger chance. I'm gonna end up. We're gonna make Lisa watch Spaceballs and Galaxy Quest, or am I gonna have to watch all the pirates again? I all watch? of them. Just all watch all of them together. Which but, one's gonna come first? <laughs> you know what you should do before any of that, Jake. Out of sound. Oh, okay, I'll do that. That was, <laughs> oh, that was segue. That was segue. That was, I know. I'm that, was a, that was a good way of saying, hey, Jake, that was a Jake the, sh- the show's over. No, Finish it was it a up. segue. It was great. <laughs> well, as we all agree completely, all my scary stories were true. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. None of the science stuff was... Science is... Science, <laughs> science, science is fake. Is fake. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, my scary stories are true. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. So join us next week as we continue to dive into the spooky world and try our best to entertain you, make you giggle, as we talk about a new place that is without a doubt paranormal. Possibly. Ah, On the Possibly Paranormal Podcast of Asty Matey.